Hello, everybody, and today is January 30th, and we're reading from Matthew chapter 26. Now the events are leading up to the death, uh, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, the plot is established uh, in chapter 26 to uh, see that Jesus is killed. You can see uh, that this is a terrible animosity, hatred, hatred for Jesus. And Jesus uh, uh, lets the, his disciples know that he's going to be delivered up to be crucified. And um, they, he tells them it's going to be by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And, uh, and yet, somehow, some way, they just simply could not comprehend it. It didn't stick with them at all. And so uh, this is laid out before them. They set up a, a trap, uh, the religious leaders, uh, to trick and to kill Jesus. So before this happens, there's this interesting story of a woman who comes to Jesus, and she has this really expensive uh, perfume. And she takes it, and she pours this on the head of Jesus. And, uh, of course, when the disciples see it, they're just, like, beside themselves. And they're, uh, the word that the Bible says here is indignant. And so they're asking, why all this waste? And uh, it could have been sold and given to the poor. And Jesus uh, said, hey, listen, the poor you'll have always with you, but you don't always have it with me. And so she is honored, and she's identified because she has done this tremendous good work. It is really a, a, uh, an example of worship, lavishing Jesus with our love and our affection. And uh, this woman uh, is really uh, giving Jesus all of herself and was willing to, to share all of her, you know, all that money to just pour it on Jesus. It's, it's an example. It honored Jesus was moved by this and shows that when we lavish Jesus with this kind of praise, it captures the attention of heaven. Now, Jesus, Judas, uh, at this point, agrees to betray Jesus. We see this in the, uh, see the 14th verse, and it says that Judas went to the chief priests, and, uh, and he asked them, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So it's an unthinkable act. Uh, and uh, so from that point on, the religious leaders are going to seek opportunity that they can take Jesus. But did Jesus know this? Did Jesus know that, that Judas was going to betray him? Well, we know that he did. He was, he's God. He's all-knowing. It's remarkable because if you go down a little bit in the 20th verse, uh, Jesus is sitting down. He's celebrating the Passover with them. And it says in the 21st verse as they were eating, he said, Jesus said, I'm telling you, surely, that one of you is going to betray me. Now, immediately in the 22nd verse, there's exceeding sorrow that overtakes everybody. And they all begin saying, look, is it I? Am I the one that's going to betray you? And Jesus then reveals who this individual is. What's, a, what's striking to me is that Jesus, who knows all things, loved Judas the same as he loved all the other disciples. You don't see him. You and I would have a tendency to show partiality. If we knew some, there was somebody in the group that's just, you know, was out to hurt us or do us wrong, uh, we would be prone to treat them differently and marginalize them and, and isolate them. But Jesus didn't. He loved them and, he, uh, and he, he continued to treat them just as he would treat anybody else. So the, uh, the supper is being shared. He introduces the new covenant. It's the word you'll find in the 28th verse. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. So Jesus is introducing this new covenant and what this new kingdom is going to be all about. Uh, Jesus predicts that Peter now is going to deny him. Uh, he mentions this in verse 31. All of you are going to be made to stumble because of me this night. Now, Peter is absolutely beside himself. He responds back and says, listen, if everybody else stumbles because of you, I will never do that. I will never be made to stumble. Now, I believe Peter meant that. I believe that from what what he understood he he really believed that and then jesus reiterates it verse 35 and peter says listen even if i have to die with you i will not deny you. i think peter meant that uh but uh obviously what jesus had prophesied uh would come to pass then jesus goes to the garden he takes his men with him he takes three of them closely uh, uh peter james and john and he says my soul verse 38 is exceedingly sorrowful even to death 
stay here and watch with me. Now, there's an interesting word, the word watch. We used to have what we called a watch night. It would be a night that the church would gather. We call it a watch service. If you look in the next verse, down in verse 40, it says, uh, uh, when he comes back, he's praying, he's asked them to join him. They fall asleep. He comes back and he says, could you not watch with me one hour? Then he says, verse 41, watch and Pray. Now, I don't know what that might entail, but it is worthy of you and I digging deeper to try to determine what is Jesus talking about. He makes a distinction between prayer and watching. Watch and pray. We find Jesus using the word watch as he refers to being prepared for his return. Watch, therefore. And so there's something that is that, that I'm not sure quite what it is that is a part of prayer that encompasses an alert watching or waiting or meditating. But, but whatever that is, Jesus emphasized it to his disciples. In the 42nd verse, you'll see that Jesus is in tremendous agony of prayer. I doubt that any of us have prayed with such intensity. One gospel tells us that he, his sweat was like drops of blood. The weight of the world was upon him. Now, when he's praying to God Almighty Father, he says, if this cup can pass from me. Let it pass, but if not, um, your will be done. So he's this cup. What is in this cup that Jesus is in such anguish? Now, some people would say, well, the cup was obviously the rejection. It could have been, you know, knowing that his disciples were all going to walk away from him. It, maybe it was the pain and the suffering of uh, being crucified, whipped, beaten. Maybe it's, uh, you know, just the fact that everybody had abandoned him. All of that could be a part of the cup, but I think that in actuality, we're talking about something far beyond the physical suffering here. The cup of God's wrath, I believe, is what Jesus is referring to, to here, in which Jesus is about to take on the wrath of God in your stead. That is, on behalf of us, we deserve the wrath of God. We deserve to be cursed. We deserve to be judged. And, and Jesus is taking on the, the sin of the entire world and the weight of that sin <clears throat> and, and the sense of the rejection. See, he's going to, he's going to take the weight of this uh, uh, that he came to die for. So on the cross, Jesus is going to bear the brunt of the world's sin, sins that have ever been committed, will be committed, all of that, every form. He took on adultery, he took on abortion, he took on all the sins, all the lust, all the lying, all the cheating, all the killing. He took it all upon himself. And that became the cup of the wrath of God when God turned his back on his son in Jesus who cried out, why have you forsaken me? So this became, comes the incredible... Um, uh, cup that he's so he's betrayed he's arrested in Gethsemane uh, they come with him after, with cubs and uh, with swords um, Judas turns him over and um, in verse 52 you know one of them cuts off the ear uh, of, of and and then here's what it says in 53 Peter is trying to protect Jesus but here's what Jesus said do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels. You know, it's a, quite a consideration that Jesus being God, he could have, he could have accessed all the protection of heaven. And, uh, you know, to be inflicted with the pain, to be hurting, to be, it will do almost anything to get out of that pain, right? I mean, get, give me anything to get out of this pain. Jesus had the lever that he could have pulled to stop it all, but he didn't. Why? Because love compelled him. He held on to obey the Father, and because of his passion for you, he was willing to suffer and to die for the sins of the world. Uh, J Jesus faces the Sanhedrin. Um, Peter's there following at a distance. Uh, <clears throat> and finally it comes to the point that the high priest, uh, he says, you know, you're, you're not talking. These witnesses have made, you've not said anything. So he, he comes right out and, uh, and he says to them, Tell us, this is down in verse 63, tell us if you are the Christ, here it is, the Son of God. So he's speaking about divinity. Are you saying you're divine? And there's no question about it. Jesus' response, it is as you said, nevertheless, 
Hereafter, you'll see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. So he's there declaring himself as God. No mistaking it because um, the high priest rips his clothes and says he's spoken blasphemy. He has said that he is God. And that was the death sentence for Jesus. And from that point on, we see it in verse 67. Can't imagine it. The most holy man that's ever lived, that's ever walked this earth, they spit on him. They, uh, they beat him. They, they strike his face with the palms of their hands. Uh, they're prophesying, mocking him. They take him into the courtyard and uh, they beat him. All of this we're, th we're seeing take place, the most holy man that's ever lived. And Jesus suffered it all for you and for me. And here the passage ends with Peter denying, just as Jesus said, denies that he even knows him. Verse 74 he curses and he swears and he's saying, I do not know the man. Everyone left Jesus. And there he is, separated from his friends, hurting, mocked, made fun of. But he didn't call the legions of angels because he wanted to obey the Father. And he loved you. And he gave his life just for you. Praise God. Difficult chapter. But we're thankful that Jesus died. His blood of a new covenant is what pays the penalty for your suffering, your, your, your death, your judgment. Thank God. For that. May God bless you today. Have a great day.